Happy fall and welcome to today's chapel. We begin by acknowledging the traditional territory upon which we gather, work, and study. For many thousands of years, the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dene, and Dakota peoples have sought to walk gently on this land. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in the partnerships with the indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. In our social studies class, we learn about residential schools. One day, Ms. Haglin showed us pictures about them. One that stood out to me was a painting showing rep officers taking kids away from their parents. I have lived all my life with my parents and I can't even think about like living one week without them. So I just want all of us to put ourselves in their positions and just think of living without them for a month even. This is important to me because we are all made in God's image. That means we are all value. It is important that we show all communities they are loved and make amends. Today in chapel, we want to take some time to honor the survivors of the Canadian residential schools and to mourn those that never made it home. We honor the image of God in each of them and we mourn the loss of life and dignity that this violence caused. After some announcements, we're going to have a guest speaker, Melvina Gabosh, joining us here. Hello everybody, we have an announcement on October 5th, early dismissal at 2.45, and on October 6th, we have Thanksgiving Chapel on October 13th, and we have Grandparents Day, and Mrs. Lowen is looking for volunteers for Chapel and Grandparents Day. Let Mrs. Lowen know if you're interested. Welcome to Calvin Christian. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, Malvina Gabosh is a community minister with Inner City Youth Alive, and she also has a podcast called Journey with Care, and that's through the um, organization Care Impact. So she's a busy lady, so we're very glad that you're here. I'm glad to be here. Good. It's good to have you. Uh, we want to talk today about Orange Shirt Day and a little bit about the day for Truth and Recon National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. But before we do that, I was just wondering if you could share a little bit of your story or how you've seen God at work in your life. How I've seen God work in my life. Well, um, I come from the inner city, so I've I've grown up in the inner city. I've grown up on all the systems in the system uh, most of my life. When I was 30 years old, I was a mother of three. I was on welfare. Um, I lived in housing. I lived in a rough part of Winnipeg, the inner city. Um, I hit my bottom. I was depressed, clinically depressed, and um, addicted to pain medication and depression pills. Uh, one day, I literally just had enough, and I felt that my children needed deserved better than me and um, I was gonna take my own life but God intervened and in the moments of me you know c trying to commit suicide in or attempting suicide um, this this fear this fear of God came upon me because I was raised in a Christian home my grandparents were ministers and they preached the gospel they loved Jesus they taught me about Jesus um, I didn't know what to do other than to call on the name of Jesus. And I did in that moment. And I told him that I didn't know how to love myself. And because I didn't know how to love myself, I didn't know how to love my children. And my children deserved to be loved. And I asked him to teach me how. And from that moment on, he came into my life. And that was 10 years ago. And since then, he's been teaching me how to love myself, how to love my children, and how to love my community. That's really powerful what God's done. And I think sometimes when we think about things like the really devastating, horrible things in our lives, or the really difficult, challenging things, or even if something like reflecting on the loss of all the children in the residential schools, sometimes we feel overwhelmed by that, right? Like, what can God actually do? But your story is such a good example of God really making a difference. And and you, your story is an, an example of hope leading to action that led to change for your life, right? 
Yes. Not only for my life, but for my children. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. I work for Inner City Youth Alive. I'm a community minister there. Mm-hmm. I've been there for three years now. And my son just turned 18, mm-hmm. but he had a summer job there a couple years ago. And we were serving the inner city during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And we were serving hampers and, you know, delivering them and whatnot. And and some of the homes that he went into, you saw a lot of a lot of hurt mm-hmm. and a lot of um, a lot of things that maybe he didn't understand. But, mm-hmm. you know, he came home one night after work and I was already home and he, he sat beside me on the couch and he rest his 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 head on my shoulder mm-hmm. and he said, thank you. And I said, why are you saying thank you? Mm-hmm. And then that's what he told me. He said, you know, I remember living like that when mm-hmm. I was a kid, when I was a baby. So mm-hmm. he had memories of it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm saying thank you because you made you made the choice to change our lives. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and he's like, you gave your life to Jesus and it changed everything for us. Yeah. And it's true. Yeah, that's so powerful. God's so good. He is. He really <laughs> so is. Great. Um, so thinking about then like the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation and thinking about the own pain that you've been through and the way that you've seen God at work in your life. What comes to mind for you when you think about truth and reconciliation and the, the pain in the, in the Indigenous community, but also, you know, the relative a lot of people don't think about that if it's not them, right? If they're not the indigenous community, settler families think about their history and this kind of like disconnect between the two. What comes to mind for you? The fact that the pain is real, mm-hmm. the trauma is real. What happened yeah. in residential schools um, is real. It happened, it took place. Um, but now, you know, as Christian people, as believers, mm-hmm. we, have, we have a choice how we're going to um, partnership with um, indigenous people, with that community, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. how we how we are going to show the love of God, the love of Christ, through mm-hmm. our actions, through our relationships, mm-hmm. through through um, our partnerships with them, you know, yeah. and it, you know, the indigenous people. I can't speak for everyone, right. but I can only, you know, I can speak for myself. I was very hurt, and I was, I was, I, I, I suffered traumatic experiences, mm-hmm. and my the generations that came before me also did. So yeah. it was a generational trauma a generational curse that was passed down to me and you know throughout my healing and throughout my journey with the lord he's healed me one by one Mm -hmm. you know things that needed to be healed you know pain that needed to you know be rooted from the root and Mm -hmm. be brought up you know he he's patient and he's kind to do that Mm -hmm. and he's done that with me and so when i think of truth and reconciliation i think about you know the 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 church or um the believers to be patient and to be kind Mm -hmm. with with the indigenous people because there was a lot of hurt that was done and there is a lot of healing that needs to take place Mm -hmm. it's interesting that you said god healed you one by one because i think sometimes too when we think about big painful situations or suffering in the world we think well like what can i do right mm-hmm. like I, I have no mass massive massive uh, magic thing to fix it but god healed you one by one in your personal journey and i think that's a good reminder for us that when we're when we see someone else's pain or when we experience pain ourselves just think okay well what's the what's the next thing that god's going to heal me in not this massive magical fix but just how can God heal me in one area, right? One piece of pain, and then he brings up another, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's he really heal, a journey. He only gives us what we can handle, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And so um, for me, when, you know, maybe my initial thought was when I gave my life to him mm-hmm. that I was going to be healed, right? I right. was perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was, I know. you know, it was good to go. <laughs> yeah. But no, that's not the way it works. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, through relationship, through experiences, through um, events that have happened throughout the 10 years of mm-hmm. me serving him, um, I have experienced that healing one by one in different yeah. things. But m- relationships is a big part of, of the healing journey yeah. and partnerships. And, and so God uses relationships to, mm-hmm. to uproot things that need to be uprooted. Hmm, that's a that's interesting. I to think about that because I think sometimes relationships feel we feel like they, we use them to serve ourselves. But the idea that maybe sometimes God is actually using relationships to dig up something in our own lives, right? Like to invite us into some freedom, but we first have to kind of poke it out, yeah. right? With the the rubbing of a relationship. Yeah. 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 Relationships a choice, right? Yeah. Relationships are choices. Um, we choose whether or not to continue that relationship or to move away from it mm-hmm. when things get hard. Yeah. You know, um, but I think we can learn things through relationships. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think you're right not to run away from relationships when they get hard because 
you know, if we, we get, become friends with someone, we get to know them, and then something gets difficult, maybe something from their past comes up or something painful comes up, and it's easier to just ignore it and to move on. But to maybe see what God is inviting you to understand or to learn through that is a really good, it's a really good reminder for us. So when you think about Jesus working at us, working in us and through us, how, what do you think it looks like well, the Bible talks about mourning with those who mourn. Um, for Christians, like we're called to walk with each other in this way, in relationship, right, to love each other. What do you think it looks like to mourn with those who mourn? Um, I would think just to to be present, mm -hmm. to be present. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will you would have the words mm -hmm. um, or the actions, but mm -hmm. just to to be present with that person that's hurting. Yeah. Um, to show that you care, mm -hmm. to show that their hurt isn't um, in vain mm -hmm. or they're not alone in it. Yeah. You know, I think it's just to be present in that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And that reminds me too of um, like God saying that he's here, he's Emmanuel, he's God with us. Yes. Right. That when, when we see someone else's pain that we don't have to, again, put like a magic bandaid on it and be like, well, God's good. Right. But that he's like, he, like he, he, he's with us when we're in pain. And so, the challenge for us, I think, is to model that for each other then, right? Yeah. When we see others in pain, to model that, to stay and be with them. Yeah. And necessarily, we're not going to have the answers. Yeah. We're not going to have the answers or the magic band-aid right. to fix the problem or fix the hurt, the hurt or the mourning. Yeah. But it's just to, you know, um, be present that that person is not alone mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. That's really good. What do you see being your hope for us as Christians as we work on truth and we work on reconciliation? My hope is Jesus. Mm -hmm. It comes down to that. My <laughs> hope answer. is Jesus. And if we can model what he already showed us he can do, yeah. then that's my hope. So, you know, when we, when we reconcile back to Christ, um, we're able to be reconciled to each other. Mm -hmm. And if we're reconciled truly to Christ, our heart belongs to him. And we want to model, you know, the, the footsteps that he, he walked and we want to mm -hmm. love the way that he loves. Then that gives me hope that we can do that for each other. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. I just want to thank you so much, Melvina, for taking the time to do this, for, for meeting with us, and for offering and sharing your story and what God's done in your life. It's a really beautiful example of um, the power that God has to bring hope, and that truth and reconciliation isn't just, you know, tell the truth and then force people to get along, but it's actually the truth of who God is, right? And that's rec reconciling us to God first. Yes. And that makes way for us to reconcile with each other. Any last thoughts you have that you want to share about truth and reconciliation or loving one another? Um, I think that I, I, would, I, I would like to share with, you know, some of your students and the mm -hmm. families, whoever is going to watch this is, you know, just to be patient and to be kind with the Indigenous people. You know, we have, we have a long way to go in our healing, mm -hmm. um, but I know that a lot of people are you know, wanting to heal. They're yeah. wanting to to um, to be free. Mm -hmm. They're wanting to live in peace. Mm -hmm. And you know, with the traumatic things that happen with residential schools, it's not a gonna, it's not going to be an easy process. Right. It's going to take time, and we need um, you know partners and we need uh, friendships and allies mm -hmm. to come alongside us and to love us where we are, mm -hmm. and and to accept us for who we are. Yeah. And with that love, I truly believe that you know. Um, more you know, there, there'll be more stories of healing more yeah. stories of of redemption more stories of you know mm -hmm. of just god working in their lives if we can show yeah. the love of god yeah that's so good thank you so much for joining us we're very honored to have you it's a real privilege to have you you are welcome yeah. would i be able to pray for you before you leave yes, yes. please all do. right let's do that Father, we thank you so much for Melvina, and we thank you for the way that you have transformed her life. We thank you for the goodness that we see in her life, that we see your truth at work in her life about who she is, how beautiful she is, and the gifts that you've given her. And so, God, we just pray that you would continue to use Melvina in each area that she has influence, that she would continue to just reflect your goodness to the world. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that as we look to leaders like Melvina and others, that we would be able to also think about how we can be patient and be kind with those who have um, a different life experience than us, with those who are in pain. And Lord, would you just give us the grace to look inside at ourselves and change where we need to change, or even just invite you because you're the one who changes Jesus. 
And so I thank you for the example that Melvina set for our students, and I thank you for all of us. And I pray that her gifts and her love for you would just continue to reflect you and bring your goodness to the world. And I pray that the hopeful vision that she has for life change through you, Jesus, would come to pass in our time. In your name, Jesus. Amen. One learning experience that stuck out to me is the day we learned about the, how the Truth and Reconciliation Commission are trying to complete all calls to action so that all Indigenous peoples can be treated equally and be respected after all the pain the, their community has had to go through. 1 John 3 verse 18 says, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. As we continue to mourn the loss of life and the destruction of families due to residential schools, our deep hope is that as a community at Calvin Christian, we can also find the courage to listen and to make the wrong things right. So this week, as you're going into your week, look for ways that you can live out the truth of God's love and God's reconciliation.